library with my fourth instalment of videos for older golfers. Practice has to be done systematically. This is a photo of Duncan Moody, a highly respected golf instructor. I was a self-taught golfer for many years, mainly by observing good golfers. I was in my 50s, my game was falling apart. While I still had a good short game, I was slicing everything. My three handicap had blown out to eight. For the first time in my life, I went to a teaching professional. I was fortunate to pick one of the best, Duncan Moody. Three weeks after I finished the lessons with Duncan, I won a country tournament with rounds of 74, 75, 72. When I called Duncan to thank him, he said, you've got a good swing, you just need a decent alignment. Rest in peace, Duncan. You may find you are not improving or going backwards. In that case, seek out a golf instructor. It's very possible you have developed a technical fault which has put you off the rails. An instructor will help you get back on track. Practicing faults will only make them worse. When I refer to the three internal variables of grip, stance and swing, the first two can be converted to constants. You can then focus on getting the third variable as routine as possible. It used to be called the repeating swing. Looking at Jim Furyk at the top of his swing, by any measure, he should be slicing the ball 30 to 40 yards to the right. He shifts the shaft position coming down an incredible 45 degrees, showering out his swing so he is coming from inside to out. By the time his hands are level with the ball, he is in textbook position. This is a repeating swing. The objective of practice is to train muscles to remember all the right elements of the swing, chip, bunker shot or putt and transfer the memory to the golf course. One can't do much about external variables except find ways to use them to advantage where possible. That's where the percentage golf comes in. There is one unnecessary variable. I refuse to play in rain. A potential bout of pneumonia isn't worth it. The grip is where we start converting a variable into a constant. I use a standard overlap grip. Jack Nicholas uses an interlocking grip because he has small hands. Art Wall, winner of the 1959 US Masters, was an exception with a baseball grip. I'm trying to maintain what is called a neutral grip. Both these are my thumbs and forefingers pointing to my chin. Variable into constant. I started my golf with both these pointing at the right shoulder. Nowadays I would consider that to be a hook grip. If you can standardise on that, it's okay, but you need to be very careful to maintain the same position. These great golfers fix their back positions, staying as straight as possible. Their shoulders are all square to the target. Their feet are square too. Their chins are up. They are looking down their nose at the ball. Keeping one's chin on the chest in an effort to obey, keep your head down, only succeeds in cramping the swing. Jack Nicholas presumably has had to make concessions to his age. His stance is more open. He is known to have hip problems. With practice, you can make your stance a constant. Creating muscle memory, you will hit the ball better even if you can't achieve their level of textbook position. Most practice ranges will have a full-length mirror. 
I suggest you use that to check and stabilize your back position. I only take one set of practice falls on the range. For me, it's a refresher course. It's better to limit practice. Too much and tiredness destroys the muscle memory I was trying to create. I warm up with five balls with my feet together. This activates the wrists and hands. I should get about 70% of the distance I get with a normal stance, irrespective of the club I use. In this shot, I am checking my stance and back position in the mirror, trying to keep my hips and shoulders square to the target. I use an open stance to clear my elderly hip better. You are training your muscle memory with any stance. That should include squaring the shoulders and hips to the target. I used to have a very square stance when I was younger. The closed stance tends to promote a draw or a hook. Throwing out my swing is intended to promote a swing that is going from inside to outside the ball. At my age, having a draw or a hook is the least of my concerns. Practicing off mats at a driving range is okay when using hybrids or woods. That's because the shot is a sweep of the club. There are two reasons to seek out grass to practice iron shots. It develops better feel. Hitting the ball first, then taking a divot in the grass. That can't be done with a mat. More importantly, hitting irons off a mat is much harder on the hands, wrists and arms. While I do not need this shot very often, I like practicing it for when I do. I work my way up through the clubs, finishing with the driver. I then wind down the practice session with the last five balls by hitting wedge shots. See you next week with course management. It's about playing percentage golf. Until then, good golfing.